Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Jada Bailey, the Mindful Mage. Um, and if you've been watching my recent videos, you know that I've been broadening my horizons as far as which deities I choose to work with in my practice. Um, and in my research and looking for deities to work with, I thought that I would make some videos about some pretty good deities to incorporate into your everyday practice. And so today we will turn our attention to the powerful and multifaceted goddess Inanna, also known as Ishtar. So please join me as we delve into Inanna at Ishtar's mythology, origins, symbols, and the way she's been honored throughout history. Inanna's story begins in ancient Sumeria, where she was revered as a symbol of love, fertility, sensuality, and war. She was considered the inspiration for other renowned goddesses like Aphrodite and Venus, and the Akkadians, Babylonians, and Assyrians recognized her as Ishtar, sometimes perceiving her as two separate entities until the reign of Sargon the Great, the ruler of the Arcadian, em sorry, Akkadian Empire. The name Anana is believed to have originated from the Sumerian term Nin Anak, meaning Queen of Heaven or Lady of Heaven. On the other hand, the name Ishtar is associated with the West Semitic god Attar, who is connected to heaven and to Venus. Attar's association with both love and war aligns with the diverse representations of the goddess Ishtar. Attar was also believed to be associated with a specific day star that was found to be a male deity who presided over the art of war. But if the star was in the night sky, it was considered to be a female deity who presided over the art of love. Interestingly, both war and love are representations of Ishtar and strongly suggest the origins of her name. After Sargon's reign, Anana's following grew rapidly, with her followers erecting temples in many different regions many different regions in Sumeria. However, her main temple was thought to have been in Uruk and was known as the Iana Temple, which meant House of Heaven. While Anana's following in Uruk flourished, Ishtar also gained popularity in the kingdom of Assyria during the reign of the Assyrian king Asurbanipal. During his reign, Ishtar became one of the most venerated deities in the Assyrian pantheon. An interesting thing to note about the temples of Inanna was that a set of her priests, known as the Gala priests, were known to have deviated from the traditional gender norms and had, to begun, oh, and had begun to take on names and, well, female names and likenesses. There are also accounts of Ishtar's priestess doing the same thing. They were known to don elaborate dresses and perform dances in her temple, bringing to light essentially a deity and a faith that doesn't, does not carry the same dogma and disdain around the spectrum of sexuality and gender as, you know, other religions and deities might. With Anana becoming one of the most frequently mentioned deities in her pantheon, many stories were being told about her various adventures and exploits that painted her in a lot of different lights. Some heroic, some innocent, and some a little more devious? Which quite frankly seems to be a trending theme with almost all female deities. In the Sumerian hymn Anana in Utu, we're told of a young Inanna that is relatively new to her power. Despite being a goddess of sex, she is quite inexperienced. And in this hymn, she travels to the underworld with her brother Utu so she can taste the fruit of a tree that grows there. After consuming this fruit, the secrets of sex are suddenly revealed to her and she demonstrates mastery over her sexual powers and sensuality from that point on. And another captivating tale is the poem Anana and in Inki. And in this tale, you'll see her more ambitious and let's say clever side. In the poem, we're told that Inki is in possession of the sacred, sacred meh, which sets the laws of the universe and facilitates creation. 
So Inanna travels to Inki's temple and enters into a drinking contest with him. Once he's drunk, she steals the meth from him and flees from his temple in the boat of heaven. When Inki awakes, when Inki wakes and realizes what happened, he sends hordes of monsters after Inanna to retrieve the meth. At this point, the goddess is very well versed in her own power and the monsters are no match for her. Inki eventually accepts his loss and concedes his power to Inanna. Over the centuries, men and women would pay homage to Inanna or invoke her in different ways. Some women would bake her cakes made from ash, um, while others would sculpt clay figurines, voluptuous clay figurines that would represent strength and would also represent the goddess herself. Now some symbols that represent Anana would be the eight-pointed star, also associated with Venus or the heavens. Um, there's also the knot reed, which is said to symbolize fertility and sensuality as well. And of course, there's also the rosette, which would eventually replace the eight-pointed star as Anana's most recognized symbol. Another representation of Anana would be lions. Um, she was believed to be able to take on the form of a lion and her and Ishtar are also said to have been often accompanied by lions as well. The goddess Anana, also known as Ishtar, is a deity of immense power and complexity. Her origins in ancient Sumeria and her subsequent influence on neighboring cultures highlight her significance throughout history as a whole. Today, we can still tap into the energy of this multifaceted, powerful goddess and incorporate her into our everyday practice as well. Working with Anana and or Ishtar can bring many benefits to us in our spiritual journeys. As a representation of love, sensuality, fertility, and war, she can help us embrace our own desires, awaken our sexual energy, and nurture our relationships. Anana's ambitious and clever nature can inspire us to pursue our goals fearlessly and unlock our true potential. Working with Anana in our magical practices allows us to tap into her power, her courage, and sensuality. She can guide us on a path of self-discovery, self-love, and empowerment. Whether seeking assistance in matters of love and relationships, or drawing strength and confidence for our own endeavors, Anana is a formidable ally. As we explore the ancient stories, poems, and hymns that weave the tapestry of Anana's mythology, we realize that she represents the full spectrum of human experience and speaks highly to the complexities of the feminine energy, the feminine experience, femininity in general. She embodies the duality of light and shadow, strength and vulnerability, love and war. And by embracing Anana's multifaceted nature, we embrace the richness of our own lives. And with all that being said, thank you so much for joining me on this enchanting walk through the world of the goddess Anana. Remember, her energy is in each of us just waiting to be awakened. So don't be scared, reach out and work with her. I will always, always, always recommend doing your own research and finding ways that she connects more deeply to you. May Anana guide and empower you on your journey of spiritual exploration and transformation. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay tuned for more deep dives into a variety of different deities that you can incorporate into your practice. And until then, love and light to you all, and blessed be.